Alright, what's up guys? It is Josh back with another video and today I'm going to be showing you what you guys just saw in that intro. Quickly before I actually get into it, we're super close to 40k subs at the time of recording this video. So if you want to help me out, make sure to drop a sub. It's 100% free for you guys to do if you change your mind on a later date. And this will be a dual platform tutorial, so I will be showing you guys how to do the effect both on After Effects and DaVinci Resolve. So with that being said, make sure to check the description for timestamps. Also make sure to check out the description for links to all the plugins you'll need for this. I'll have a tutorial linked down below as well. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. And quickly before I actually hop into the editing software, guys, I'm going to be showing you how you can download the color correction preset I'll have linked in the description. So to do that, all you got to do is just press the download button, X out of this window right here. It should just pop up right here. So once this menu pops up with where you want to save it to, just navigate on over to wherever you have your looks installed on. It should just be something like your C drive. Just go down to users, go to the name of the users, go to app data, go to local, find looks builder, go to looks go to custom and save it in there. If you don't see the looks builder folder, it's because you don't have magic bullet looks installed. I'll have a link to the installation down below. It's 100% free and works for both softwares. So make sure to head on over to the description and do that before installing the preset for the color correction. But with that being said, I'm going to hop into DaVinci and I hope you guys enjoy the video. All right, guys. So I'm in a brand new DaVinci Resolve project. We can see that we have our frame rate set to 60, 1920 by 1080. I have all the stuff I will need in the media pool right here. We got the song, which is going to be stone cold. Old. We got the clip, which I will have in the description as well. It's a little charge clip of me hitting a guy 112 full charge. Pretty nice for a warp buildup effect, which I'm going to be showing you guys. And then we also have this bass drop buildup that I'm going to be showing you guys how to implement into the clip to give it a better buildup effect. All right. So the first thing you want to do is actually just drag in your song just like this. And you're going to want to navigate to the beat where we actually want our shot to hit. So for me, it's going to be right here. I'm going to shorten the rest down to right here just so it's not too long. And I want the buildup to start right here so that's there's just a point in the song where you can see the buildup should start and i'm just gonna trim the clip just right here just so we have a small portion to work with and we're just gonna drag it down an audio track so we have enough space for the clip so we're gonna drag in the clip this is the clip that i'll have linked in the description i'm gonna shorten it down to where we actually hit the shot right here and you're gonna want to line it up have your marker on the beat line it up where we actually get the numbers and part of the text for the elimination so this should be good now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a simple build up so to do that we're just gonna start an adjustment clip where we actually placed a marker for our build up to start we're gonna trim it down just like this cut off this excess right here all right so now that we have it fully synced we're just gonna quickly time remap it so just right click unlink your clips go to read time controls at a speed point on the kill right here you're gonna want to have maybe like a 50 percent go to about right after here you can just add a small speed point change it to something like 200% just so it jumps and then you should just have something like this and then we'll change this one to 50% just so it all lines up but yeah now that we've done that we're just going to start an adjustment clip where we actually have the red marker we're going to go to right about here drag it down to where the kill actually starts and now that we have a time remapped it should be completely good to actually start our warp effect all right so to do our actual warp just bring in bcc bulge just like this drag it in press shift on your keyboard if you have a preset you can just uh pretty much just drag it in and it should be just good to go all you got to do if you are just manually doing the effects yourself which i would recommend because every clip is different in terms of the keyframing just make sure you go to the very beginning keyframe all these values just at their normal amounts so at the very first frame and then go to the very end and you're going to want to keyframe the height to something like negative 150 should be fine. You can make the perspective something like 50, 50 should be fine. And then you can make the radius something like 1,500 or 2,000 depending on uh, how big you want your uh, warp effect. So for me, I'm making 1,500 should be fine and from here we're actually going to use our spline so bring up your spline by pressing this menu right here select bcc bulge get rid of the height and radius we're just going to work on the height for now press this little arrow tool right here and you're going to want to copy this exact graph that i'm about to show you just like this and then you're going to want to do the same exact graph but on the opposite side this way so the starting value goes all the way up and this one goes like this then this last one just go like this something like that and something Thing like that should be good we're gonna collapse that get rid of the spline but we can see that we do have a nice warp effect it zooms in right before the kill and all that's left to do pretty much is just to add our color correction and shake so we're just gonna add a shake i'm actually gonna do it inside the fusion tab because that's what the preset has 
So we're just going to add some sort of pre-shake. So I'm just going to add a S shake. This is a Sapphire shake. So you'll need the Sapphire plugins if you want to follow along with the actual pre-shake. And if you aren't using the preset, make sure to just copy these settings right here. The X shake set to zero, the Y shake set to that exactly right there. But on the first frame, you're going to want to keyframe it at zero. And at the very end, you're going to want to keyframe it at something like 0.7 just so it goes a nice little build up just like this. We can see that it's a nice little build up right there. And now we're just going to add another adjustment layer just above this. So get rid of your shake, go to adjustment layer, add it right here. And we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 frames to the left. Drag this adjustment clip like this, split it in the middle, just like this, so it ends in the clip. And then we're going to go into our effects and look up looks just so we can actually drag it on and add our color correction. So we're going to add our looks. We're going to add the color correction that we have right here. So it's the Joshi isolated blue. And this color correction is really good because when the sky is a dark purple because of the storm, it does color correct it. You can make fine adjustments just to fix it a bit. I'm also planning on releasing color correction every single time I make a over edit tutorial. So stay tuned for more color corrections like this. But what we're going to want to do for this, go to your effects, just keyframe the strength at the very beginning at zero. And then right when the second adjustment clip for the warp starts, we're going to keyframe it at 100 so just drag it up all the way all right and the last thing we're going to want to do we're just going to drag an adjustment clip just like this directly over top lining up with the adjustment clip down below and what this is going to do it's going to give us a nice hue shift effect on the actual color correction so go into your fusion press control space look up bcc hue sat lightness drag it in and we can see it doesn't give us options to change anything right here so we're just going to press these drop down menus right here just to give us the option to actually change it where we can see hue keyframe the hue at the beginning at zero go to the very end change it to 750 and what it will do we can see It'll give us a nice RGB sky effect, which I've seen a lot of people use and I've had some people ask me how to actually do it. So it's a super good effect, really good for your montages and buildups. And the last thing you're going to want to do, I'll have an impact preset just linked down below in the description if you guys want to use that. I'm just going to add my impact just to uh, do that. But another thing I do recommend, just copy your color correction preset just right here and get rid of the keyframes and just to actually fade out the color correction something i recommend is keyframe the color correction on the kill at 100 and then you can drag it out to the very end and keyframe it at zero just so it gives a nice little fade just so it goes like this boom color correction then it fades out and then if you guys want to add black bars in davinci all you got to do just drag an adjustment clip starting on the warp effect just drag it out a bit go five frames back just like this keyframe your top and bottom at zero go back and you can change the value to something like 30 and it, what it will do is it'll fade in the bars and then boom right on the kill it'll actually fade out the black bars all right guys and lastly after you've added all the effects you've needed just drag in the little bass drop thing right here and what you're going to want to do just go to the change clip speed change it to negative 100 and we're just going to find the loudest point so it's going to be right about here add a marker to it and what we're going to do is we're going to drag it down in our audio track so it's down below shorten it and you're just going to find it so it can line up exactly with this clip drag it out all the way and what you can do you can keyframe the volume at around negative 20 at the beginning of one two three four five six seven eight nine ten frames to the right change it to about zero and what it should do is it should have a nice little it's not really noticeable if you want you can raise the volume just a bit just by going to the keyframe right here and changing it to something like, i don't know if you want to have it like a, at a plus three or something like that it's just a nice little build up sound but yeah that's pretty much it for the actual da vinci side of things all presets will be in the description like i said the impact preset the rgb cycle preset the warp preset all that stuff make sure to install the plugins if you guys are having trouble with that but i'm going to be moving on to the after effects portion so i'll see you guys if you're sticking around for that all right guys so i'm in a brand new after effects project i do have just my composition settings set to 1920 by 1080 and 60 fps like just the standard uh, settings the first thing we're going to want to do is just drag in your song and you're going to find the first beat you're going to hit your shot on so i found the beat right here we're just going to play some marker by pressing whatever it is on your keyboard you could just right click come into markers right here add a marker we're just going to shorten it down just a bit on the side I drag it over here and then close that. I don't know why that opened. And I'm just going to trim it down on the side just to give us some space to work with. But we're just going to expand this just a bit uh, just so we can kind of see uh, what we're working with. So we're also going to drag in the clip just right here and just trim your clip down just so we're lining up 
the actual beat on the song with our kill just like this and we're also just going to trim this down just a tiny bit all right so the first thing we're going to do make sure you have twixter installed and we're going to just go like this dragon twixter onto our clip and we're just going to keyframe twixter at the very beginning at 100 percent we're going to come down here to about this point before we do a little drop down I'm going to keyframe this right here, just by pressing U on our keyboard to bring up the keyframe menu. Just go like this. We're going to have it go down to about 30 right here. So we're going to add a keyframe, change the value to 30, just so it does a little small fade like this. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 frames before this, add a keyframe on 30 as well. Go to the kill, and we're just going to up the twixter just until the shot actually hits. Just like this that just right there it might be a bit too fast so we can make adjustments afterwards i uh, just go two frames after change your value to 50 percent just like this uh we're what we're gonna want to do to actually add this warp effect i'm gonna find this part on the song right here where it says leave me alone kind of where we're gonna start our build up uh, i put the marker on the wrong point we're just gonna go like this put it on the song and we're going to add an adjustment layer by pressing Control alt y just like this drag it below the song i just like keeping the song above uh, everything else because it makes syncing a lot easier just make it so it lasts this distance right here what we're gonna do also we're just gonna get all of our adjustment clips ready so we're gonna go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten have an adjustment clip start 10 frames before the actual clip right here uh, just so it goes like this distance boom that's what we're gonna have our color correction on and then we're gonna add this one right here and this one is going to be for the impact so we're just gonna have it go from the kill to the very end of the clip we can honestly just shorten it down just like this and shorten it down and what you're going to want to do for this just import the preset i'll have linked in the description and it's just going to be like this god warp just like that and just pick this uh, preset that i'll have right here linked in the description and just press u to bring up your preset menu just like this just press u to bring up your uh, keyframe menu drag it out so it lasts the length of the adjustment clip just like this and that should be good all i'm gonna do is i'm gonna adjust the spline after i'm gonna also make sure that this is lined up you're gonna make sure that this is on 960 and 540 right here just as the actual center point and it should just hit right there but yeah that's pretty much good for the warp i'll have that linked in the description like i said and then we're also going to add a pre-shake so just by doing that we're just gonna look up shake add a shake i'm gonna collapse this just so we're not looking at the menu i'm just gonna load one of the presets that i have and then for this we're pretty much just gonna keyframe the amplitude at the beginning at zero go to where the kill is about to hit change it to one just so we can see we have a nice pre-shake just like this you can turn on the amplitude just a bit maybe to something like i don't know 17 or something just so we're not and then that's pretty much it for the actual warp all we're gonna do now is just add our looks so just look up magic bullet looks i put it on the wrong thing just put it on this right here go to this we're gonna find the preset that we saved so that's gonna be the isolated blue two or for you guys it's gonna be named joshy isolated blue and what that'll do i explained it in the davinci portion i said it changes the color of the sky to like a blue and from there we can do a hue shift so 10 frames before which is where this starts we're gonna have it on zero just like this i didn't change the value keyframe it at zero go to where the actual build up starts change it to 100 just so it does a fade in just like that and it will end on the clip but don't worry we'll actually have a nice fade out for the color correction just so it looks a bit cleaner and now we're just going to add a little adjustment clip above this right here we're going to go right about here trim it right on the kill and look up just right here bcc hue sat lightness add that to the adjustment clip above the color correction and we're going to keyframe the hue at its default value at the very beginning go to the end and in this box right here type in 750 what it will do is it'll do two times plus 30 and what that does it'll have a nice rgb hue shift like you guys can't see all you can do from there just add a nice impact i'm just gonna have god impact joshi which is like a impact that i have preset you can just drag these keyframes out right here and from here i'm just going to change the settings on this shake just like this and that should be good to be honest and we're just gonna drag the distort rgb out just a bit and yeah that's pretty much the impact i use in all my things all that's left to do is actually take the color correction that we have we're going to put it onto this one right here we're gonna flip the color correction keyframe so we're gonna bring the one at the beginning to the very end and bring this one to the very beginning so what that'll do is it'll have this rgb it'll have our color correction still and then it will slowly fade out to the default colors of the clip 
and uh, yeah that's pretty much going to be it for the actual build up itself all that's left to do is actually add black bars so to do that just add an adjustment layer that's brand new we're just going to have it so the black bars actually come in right at this marker right here which is where the build up starts so we're going to go about five frames back go one two three four five frames back cut it by pressing Control shift d on your keyboard look up motion tile just right up here motion tile drag that onto the adjustment clip and from there we're going to keyframe the output height at the very beginning to 100 go to where the the uh, build up starts keyframe it at 80 and what we'll do is we'll bring up this menu highlight these press f9 on your keyboard or you can press fn n9 if you have a 60 percent keyboard and from there copy the curve i do just go like this drag that up and maybe bring it down just a tiny bit and lastly what we're going to do with this base drop just drag it in just like this bring up the actual uh, wavelengths right here by pressing l on your keyboard twice and what we're going to do we're going to right click on it go to time go to time reverse layer so it flips it around and we can see this right here is where the audio actually peaks so we're going to try to line that part up with the actual uh kill just like that and we can just cut it maybe right up so here go to our keyboard and press l keyframe the audio levels right here at negative 20 go to maybe right before the build up keyframe it at zero and what that'll do but uh yeah that's pretty much it i'm gonna size this down render it out so we can have that all the presets you guys will need will be linked in the description like i said for you guys to check out as well as the color correction all that stuff i'm different one every single time so you guys can implement that into your own videos but if you guys did enjoy like comment subscribe everything you need will be in the description we're super close to 40k like i said so make sure to drop a sub would mean a lot to me and i hope you guys enjoyed peace out